So the topic of today's sermon is about fear, but I want to give it a different title. The title I want to give it is a title that Mayo uses a lot, which is the tiger versus the mosquito. Now, if you ask yourselves honestly, what are you more afraid of, tigers or mosquitoes? Most people will say the tiger, right? Why? The tiger's big, it's ferocious, it's scary, it has those long claws and the big teeth and the big mouth and it kills people, it kills big animals. It's dangerous. What about mosquitoes? Eh, they're just annoying no big deal. But here's the thing. If we look at the statistical probability, what is the probability of you even seeing a tiger in your entire life? What's the probability? It's very hard to find a real tiger except for in the zoo, and those are in cages and everything. But in your lifetime, will you ever even meet a real forest tiger? Will you ever even go to the forest and meet a forest tiger? The chances, actually they probably live in the jungles anyway. What are the chances? Very low. But what are the chances of you encountering mosquitoes? Anyone who's been to Thailand, especially us people born in America or live in America a long time, we can tell you that we get more blood taken from us by mosquitoes in a lifetime than 10 lifetimes by a, by a tiger. I don't even know if in 10, ti ti 10 lifetimes I've even seen a tiger, but I know mosquitoes have sucked my blood for many, many, many years. What's more, what, what, what should we focus our attention on? What should we focus our thoughts on? Now this leads me to two more stories that I wanted to show you. So today I came with some statistics so that you can believe that I'm not just making it up. I'm gonna ask you a couple of things. Between murders, which is other people killing other people, and suicides, what do you think there's more of? If you look at the news or you look at books and TV, what do you hear more about? probably murders, right? People killing each other all the time. But in 2008, the number of suicides was almost three times the number of murders. So that means there was, for every one murder, there was three suicides. We hear stories about kids who get uh, kidnapped by strangers all the time, right? It happens a lot. What's more scary, kids getting kidnapped or kids drowning in a pool? It says here that almost two to one, over two to one, Two for every kid that's kidnapped, two kids drown in a pool. What about burglaries? When people like bonna, people rob you or, or rob or they come and take your stuff. Versus identity theft. Identity, identity theft is when people take your identity and use it and make social security stuff and work with it or steal it and do different things with it. It says here that four times, there's four times more identity theft than burglaries. I'm going to skip down the line in a couple of things. For example, when we get in an airplane, how afraid of we are the airplane that the airplane might fall, right? When it starts shaking, the turbulence, like, oh god, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. Some people are deathly afraid of airplanes. But what about cars? Now this is something that really, uh, really affected me because lately I've been sitting in people's cars and I've been noticing that some people have um, entitled about Dailan. Right? They drive and they're very like ferocious or they're very aggressive and they're very like my way or the highway. Some people drive and they're all about like checking their phones, their cell phones, they're always looking and calling people and not paying attention. Some people are just, just not, they're just not good drivers. Some people are very scared all the time and they make very like shaky decisions. And it shows me that, wow, how dangerous it is, is it out there in the, in the world of automobiles? But what are we more afraid of? Realistically, between a plane falling and a car crash. The statistics for this is crazy. This says every year, there's only 300 or so deaths by airplane. But by car accidents, there's 34,000. 34,000. Yeah, it's a lot. Now the last one. How many people here are afraid of the IRS? Afraid of getting audited, afraid of getting your taxes, the checking on your taxes? But do you know that there are more people who just die normally than people who get checked by the IRS? Death is more common than the IRS auditing, yet we are more afraid of the IRS than death. Some people would rather die than have the IRS bother them. <laughs> now, 
what does this, what does this tell us? I want to give you one more story, which if you might have heard it from, uh, it's a very famous book. Have you ever heard called Moby Dick? It's about a big whale. So in this story, this is the actual story that it was based on, the real story. Well, some fishermen back in like 1915, 1920 or something, they were on a boat. There was nine fishermen in a big boat. Now they got hit by a sperm whale and the ship crashed. And so they, they all got into three little boats, like tiny, tiny like whaling boats, like little ones with not very much food. So at that time, they had to make a decision. What should we do? There was three choices. The nearest island is about a thousand miles away. Then you can also go to Hawaii, which is about 2,000 miles away. Or we could go down south and hopefully we'll catch a current that will take us to South America, which is like maybe 3,000 miles away. But that's more something that we want. So what should we do? If it was each one of you sitting in that boat, what would you do? Well, for these three gentlemen, they thought about it. These nine people, they thought about it. They said, well, the island nearby here, I heard a rumor. I heard a rumor that they're cannibals, which means kon kon. So if we go there and we're tired and we go onto the shore, they might just eat us. That's really scary. Hawaii, we don't have any compass. We don't have anything, so we don't know if we'll even get there. But the South America one, the only problem with that is that you go south for so long, you run out of food. So which one would you choose? Think about it for a quick second. Which one would you choose? Would you go to the near island with the cannibal? Would you try to find a way to Hawaii even though you don't know where it is? Or would you just go south and hope that you, know, you don't run out of food first? What would you pick? Well, these, th these nine gentlemen, they chose to go south. They chose to go towards South America. Well, what happened was they ran out of food after two months. And when they found the remaining three people that were surviving, you know what story they told? How did they stay alive for the extra month? They resorted to cannibalism. The remaining three people ate the people who died. And that's how they survived. Ironic, isn't it? That the only reason they had to resort to cannibalism is because they were afraid of cannibals. Now, do you know what that island that was nearby is called today? called Tahiti. There were no cannibals there. It was a nice place. They just didn't know. But here's the point of it. The point of this whole story that I'm telling you is this. Our fear of the unknown is our imagination goes so wild and so crazy that to us, what's more scary? Cannibals or starving to death? Well, the image in your head of people biting into your skin and tearing your skin apart and all of that is so scary versus just slowly dying. I think I'm scared of the cannibals. But in reality, there's so much more you could do in the situation here. There's so many more things that are impermanent. There's so many more things, yet we didn't see that. We let our fear take over. So that's the whole point is this. Sometimes the small and painful death, the small and painful fear, that's the one that you should be afraid of. Not the one outside, not the one, the big, magnificent, scary one. You have to be logical and reasonable. To finish off, do you know the people who have to go to hell and the people who go to heaven, like people like us who go to hell and go to heaven, why? Is it because we do good things for random strangers? Or is it because we go to hell, because we hurt some random strangers? No, the Buddha, Long Pa, Mayo, they all teach that. The people that will decide whether you get to go to heaven or hell are the people sitting right next to you. If you hurt the people that you were born with, the people right next to you, that's the reason you go to hell, not because of the strangers. If you help the people around you, like your parents, your friends, people who deserve your help, that's why you deserve to go to heaven. So look around you for the things that might not have caught your attention before and pay attention to them. And for the things that scare you so drastically, are you really sure that it's as scary as you think? I'd like to rejoice with you in the merit that you've done today and let us prepare to receive the blessings from the monks and the nuns.